All right, guys, it is that time on the NA version of the game where I have to tell you to skip out on a banner because over here on the NA version of the game for the Summer 5 rerun, we have the second banner going live with all of the following units right here. And obviously, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that you really should not be summoning on this banner when you have Lost Belt 6, Anniversary, and Summer with a lot of very hype and strong units coming out right after this. I mean, the craziness is going to start in early June. That's just a couple weeks away and you'll want to be really smart don't be like me summoning for like miss crane and musashi and nero bride and everything don't be a dummy like me save your saint court so you can get these very powerful servants that are definitely going to up the value of your account and they're going to be very very strong and helping you complete some more difficult content or farming stuff along those lines but I do know that there are going to be some people that are going to summon on this banner. I myself am fighting the urge to not summon for Tomoe Saber over here because I really like Tomoe. So I can understand that some people are going to, you know, not be as strong willed and they're going to give it to the banner. So even though I'm telling you to not summon on it, let me at least give you guys a brief synopsis of all the servants that are on the banner, what they all do and kind of if they're worth rolling for. And for the record, I think these are like a fine selection of servants, but even if we didn't have a Lost Belt 6 coming out really soon, I don't think this is a banner that really deserves your Saint Quartz. The power level of these servants is just not really going to hold up super well with like the next two years that we have coming with like JP content, right? They're all fine enough, I suppose, but you definitely have better servants to be spending your Saint Quartz on, especially if you are more free to play. Now, again, this doesn't apply to any of my whales. If you're a whale person, you were already summoning on this banner the microsecond that it dropped over on the NA version. So don't let me stop you. You know, you, you were going to summon already. But before we actually begin to start diving into some of these servants, if you have not already, make sure you leave a like on the video and you subscribe to the channel for that sweet daily FGO content where your boy is always out here making sure that you are informed on what is going on on both versions of the game. Also, I should be getting back to my regular streaming schedule where I stream every weekday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. I will be getting back from vacation, so if you want to see me play FGO or some other stuff live, make sure you go give that a follow down in the description down below. But let's go ahead and just start talking about some of these units. And arguably the unit that I feel a lot of people may be tempted to summon on this banner for is going to be Fujino because even though Lesengel gave us like a bonus rate up, she's still one of the more rarer characters, right, in the game because she only came out for the Cardinal Kill Kai rerun, and then she came back for this event exactly. We had an extra banner for her over here on NA, but she's still pretty rare. We don't know how often they're going to bring her back. And it's on top of the fact that she's very rare, that she's also pretty decent as well. She's not, again, one of the craziest servants in the game, but she'll definitely put in some work for you because she just does a little bit of everything. She's got nice damage. She can pierce defense. She has nice survivability with her guts and the damage taken over here. And her NP can do some okay damage. And the buff block thing, you guys know that I do love this uh, because I like it on people like Jalter because it can really shut down uh, what the bosses are actually doing to you. And so it just makes her like generally a good servant to use you'll get some mileage out of her again not the most crazy servant in the world but she's also like got this value as a trophy type servant where because she's very rare it feels really nice to just have her in your caldea so I can understand if you're like, I'm going on this banner because I just want to try to get one copy of Fujino. You're going to want to wait for her to try to go on like a solo right up. You want to try to find her on like one of these days, right? To try to give yourself the best chance of grabbing her and not getting somebody that you don't want, right? Because, you know, on this one, they're going to have split right up and it's going to be harder to get Fujino if you're specifically going for her. So, Speaking of the other four stars, we have Murasaki Shikabu. Now, this is one of those servants that I've actually come around on a little bit. The Summer Murasaki is primarily a debuff servant that tries to lock down the enemies, and then it just tries to kind of control the fight from there, and then will slowly win the fight. Well, I say slowly, but thankfully she is an art servant, so Castoria does massively gas up her damage with the massive arts buffs, the attack buffs, and the even larger attack buffs on her own NP. And it can also help her out with any small consistency issues that she may have that you might find her having with her lower natural NP gain. She's very fun to use. When she initially came out, I was not very high on this servant. 
I have given her a couple of extra brownie points here and there after using her for, you know, the last year since she came out, but I still wouldn't say that she's exactly worth going for. Again, like say Fujino, you might get some mileage out of her if you have maybe a newer account, but you're just going to find people that do her job a lot better than she does as you start to progress your account, especially with, again, Lost Belt 6, Anniversary, the new summer events coming out. You'll find other single target servants that can get the job done or they can just pump out more damage or more effectively control the fight than Murasaki. I can't say that she's like not fun to use because I love using these like control type servants that try to like lock down the enemy and you know it is a Rida servant so she's great to look at as well but I can't say that she's exactly worth summoning for it. Now this one I say with a very heavy heart because you guys know that I do love me Tomoe and they finally gave her a summer form and she looks real nice in it. I will say that she is usable as a arts farmer. Like if you need to use her, you can get the job done with her because thankfully they learned from their mistake with Okita and they didn't put the stun on her NP. They put it on the skill that you don't need to use for farming because none of these effects are needed for farming at all. You get everything you need from the other skills over here, right? If you need to do like a crit on the final node, you could bomb some stars, but realistically, you just need to click this on the final node and you're all good to go. That being said, the fact that it's only one turn of an art performance buff is going to hurt her a lot when it does come to farming, especially because her hits aren't exactly all that high. Now, if she maybe stacked this buff right here, like let's say she got 20% every time she fired her NP, like let's say someone like Jason or Muramasa, these characters that build up and get stronger as they go through nodes, then maybe she would be fine, but it just felt like they went a little too soft on this servant, right? They didn't exactly make her stellar, right? They didn't make her super amazing. They made her usable, but not crazy. So while you can use her as an arts loop or everything, again, you're just gonna find better options. And especially because you have Jason, I'm just gonna say you should probably just stick to using him. I think the Skyhawk Lotto, I believe it was, where Jason was good for one, I don't, think, I don't think it was the Skyhawk one, but you guys know what I'm talking about. There was a lottery recently that Jason was very good specifically for one of the nodes and people would notice that, oh yeah, he's building up his arts performance and he is going from like looping 80% of his NP to like 100 and then like 110, right? Like he was like getting better and better because he builds up as he goes through nodes. And if you've used Muramasa, you know that he gets exceptionally better as the fight goes on because he's stacking both arts and NP damage as well. So he's like double buffing himself as he goes through the nodes he's getting better at looping getting better at doing damage and with those two guys just kind of floating around in the arts meta i suppose unless you just want to use tomoe because you're like me and you really like her there's not really a point to use her right especially like you know if you want to be in the comments and you really want to argue that you think that tomoe is better than jason at the end of the day jason is free right so the fact that he is at the worst case scenario good enough to get the farming done he's free, right? So there's like no reason for you to go for Tomoe unless you do actually just specifically like her a lot. But I will say for the record, I do think Jason is better because I think Jason is actually a really, really strong free-to-play server. Let me just say that now before someone in the comments comes after me. I think Jason is a very phenomenal free-to-play servant and because everybody has access to him, there's not really a reason to go after someone like Tomoe. Finally, there is Summer Abbey over here, which is funny because we just talked about her yesterday when we were talking about who are considered like some of the worst servants in FGO. And I will say, I don't think she really is even in that contention, right? A lot of people have this weird idea with Summer Abigail where they want to use her as a farmer because she has the 50% battery on an AOE buster kit, right? So that should be shooting off like a bunch of flares in your head that like this person is going to be really good with Koyan's Gaia. But the thing is with Summer Abigail is that you can use her with Koyan's Gaia, but just not ideally for farming. You would like to bring her to more difficult content because all of Abigail's things want her to be in a more high difficult boss environment because she's slamming this down on people, which is only good if she's fighting a boss, right? You can't carry this through every single node like a self buff, right? So she, again, she really wants to fight a boss. She's got ways to kind of keep the party around by doing the stuns and then look at this. She's also got some defense downs over here as well. This again, building up more damage if she's fighting a single wave of people and the waves are not changing as they do in farming nodes. Even over here, she's got this new like sleep status thing, which I don't really think is quite the best. I'm not gonna lie. I think the sleep thing is uh, kind of weird. It's an interesting like way to subvert stuns, but 
you know, as soon as you hit them, they just kind of wake up again. And she has an AoE NP, so I don't think it really works all that well for it. But maybe if she was single target, it'd go really, really crazy for her, right? If you gave this to her um, normal version, might go nuts, right? But then she's also like removing all of their buffs. Again, very, very good and more difficult content. If the enemies are like stacking just an annoying amount of like offensive or defensive buffs, you can yeet those away. Even if you can't remove, say like this defensive buff that the boss has, the boss is gonna give themselves other buffs that you can remove that again, very good for that. And then also you do get this like really big, massive amount of damage for one attack so you just use that whenever you want to fire your NP and you just go obliterate them and then look at this like just chunks all of their like defensive buffs so like kind of a baby version of the Amakusa effect this is not a bad like server to use in more difficult content but again I understand that you see this and you know lights are going off in your head and you really want to use them as a buster AoE farmer but I think if you just get out of that mindset and you decide that you want to use her in more difficult content, she's naturally just not all that bad. I think you can get some decent mileage from her. But again, after all of that like nice stuff that I have to say about her, I don't think she's exactly worth summoning on, right? I think if you're going to summon on one of these two banners, you summon on this banner, right? Because this banner, I feel is like where all the power is at because Summer Kiara is still pretty decent on JP. If you have her, you can still use her and you don't feel like you're two years behind on the meta. You know, there's definitely like better servants to be using, like say, uh, Summer Ibuki, but at least Summer Kiara has applications that you can use her as a farmer, but she can also be really good in more difficult content. She's kind of flexible and then she can kind of do both. And then Ilya over here, if you need just like a decent enough standard dot JPEG quick looper she can do that role for you just fine brian hilder is kind of the only stinker over here but hey I'm of the opinion that if you really do splurge and you get higher NP copies of Bryn Hilder, she can actually be fairly decent I guess is the nicest way I could say that this banner it's just like it just feels as though they're really banking on you really wanting to get Fujino because of how rare she is but then again it's very odd that they just put Fujino on a banner on NA like what like nine months ago or something like it was around the time when Lasangle like first took over the game so I don't know we'll We'll see about that. We'll, we'll see if people actually decide to go summon on this like Fujino banner because of that. But because yeah, that's I even call it the Fujino banner because she's like the main draw for uh, what you want to go for over here just because of how rare she is. But let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Let me know if you're going to be summoning on this banner. Again, I do not advise that you summon on this. I think you should save your Saint Quartz. Not only are the servants that are coming up ahead way stronger than everybody on these banners, but they're also really sick characters. I think everybody, once you guys get to read Lost Belt 6, you guys will definitely love people like Morgan, Bargus, uh, Sith a lot more than you already do. Uh, people like Melusine that people probably already like will become even more beloved once you can start getting into the nitty gritty of the story. I'm telling you guys, you'll want to save for these guys. They are absolutely well i said you want to say for these guys but i'm just now thinking i'm like actually they're all chicks <laughs> no percival comes out with mellow scene so technically there is a guy on there there is guys all right never mind <laughs> i'm not i'm not too wrong on that one you can't call me on the comments on that one because sometimes i'll misspeak and i'll notice someone in the comments will try to come get me you can't get me for that one but uh yeah with all that being said i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you guys have yourselves a nice day peace away guys